greetings from IAPSM eConnect Biostatistics team. The topic of today's discussion is what are the implications of different data types in biostatistics. So we will be dealing this study or dealing this topic with the help of a scenario so that a better understanding develops and people can relate with that. So let's start this presentation and the trigger, qu trigger question for this is um, a young postgraduate in PSM was of the opinion that girls perform better in exams than boys. So he did a cross-sectional study and collected data on marks of the undergraduate MBBS students, their gender and difficulty level of the question paper, which ranged from 1 to 5, 5 being the most difficult question paper and 1 being the easiest of them. So this is the data the postgraduate collected and uh, I would like to ask you whether you could infer anything from this data right now. So if this particular data is not summarized, you will not be able to infer anything from it. So better marks are represented as average marks. So you have an idea about the performance of the class. Now can you apply similar thing over gender? Can you have something like, like average gender? Of course not because this is a different type of data. The marks obtained is a quantitative or a numerical data, whereas the gender is a nominal, uh, nominal or qualitative data or categorical data. It can surely be summarized in different way by calculating the frequencies and proportions. So we can differentiate between these two types of data. The third question that is the difficulty level of, level of question paper is a sub kind of qualitative or categorical data in which there is an inherent order and it is known as ordinal data. So there are different ways of summarizing different kinds of data. So the numerical or the quantitative data can be summarized with the help of the measures of central tendency and the measures of dispersion as in given in this slide. The qualitative data as I said can be summarized as frequencies, percentages or proportions. Often in statistical analysis part of the research paper you would find such statements differentiating between how the different types of data were summarized. So it underlies or undermines the need of differentiating between two types of data. Now there uh, is also a classification uh, which says there are several scales under each category of data. A qualitative data can have a nominal or ordinal scale as discussed earlier. Numerical scale or uh, numerical or quantitative data can also have interval or ratio scale under those headings. But as far as the uh, statistical analysis is concerned, we need not differentiate between interval and ratio scale data. We can consider it as numerical or quantitative data. But we have to differentiate between nominal and ordinal data. So the first purpose of determining the type of data is that it helps to summarize or it helps to identify the way in which the data should be summarized or described. Now, the student wanted to dive deep into the data. That means he wanted to have uh, know the what is the distribution of marks of the whole class. So what he can gain, gain a look at the performance. Is it different for males and females? So what is the range of marks within which the 50, middle 50% 50 of the class lies? In other words, the interquartile range. So is it again different for the males or females? How many students were passed or failed? Is it more for males or females? So to answer these question, he decided to have uh, a different categories or uh, different types of displays, uh, which would eventually make it easier for him to uh, display the data. So there are various graphical techniques with which the data can be displayed. So he uh, plotted a box plot of the total marks of the whole class. So you can see that the median score of the whole class was around 100 marks. Now he did the same thing for separately for boys and girls. So he can see that uh, females have scored better marks than the boys. The, uh, in fact, the interquartile range is also better for the females. He can also have a look for uh, distribution of the total marks of the whole class with the help of a histogram. Now he can also uh, plot a histogram separately for males and females. Now, if the question is uh, how many passed or how many failed, he can simply plot a bar diagram or a pie diagram. 
So uh, if, if he wants to add an extra layer of gender, he can have a multiple or clustered bar diagram. Here we can see that the number of females who have passed are far more than that of uh, males, right? Uh, the same thing can be uh, seen in this stacked bar diagram. So the point which I want to emphasize here is there are several, several methods in which or several ways in which a type of data can be graphically displayed. A quantitative data can be displayed graphically with the help of these uh, ways, whereas a qualitative data can be displayed by these ways. Now they are not interchangeable. So the point is that uh, you need to determine the data type so that you can appropriately, appropriately display uh, the data or you appropriately decide the graphical display. So the second purpose of determining the data type is it helps in identifying the way in which the graphical presentation of data should be done. Now the obvious question is that who performed better the boys or the girls? The, we have already seen that uh, the descriptive analysis which seems that females have performed better than boys. Now the next question is is it due to chance? So a, a clause of inferential statistics came from here. So what the student can do is that uh, one of the methods is that he can compare the average marks of the boys and the girls. Now here the girls average marks are better than that of boys. Or the another thing which he can do is that he can compare the proportions of those who passed uh, amongst the boys and the girls. He can see that 64% of the girls passed whereas only 42% of the boys passed. Now this comparison between the mean marks of boys and girls or the proportions of those passed in boys and girls has to be compared with the help of a statistical test. Right. So choice of this statistical test would depend on the type of data. So if the data type is a mean, that means a numerical data or a quantitative data, then the type of statistical test which we will use if the data distribution is normal is that t-test. And the choice of test for the proportions or comparing the proportions is the chi-square test. So the bottom line here is that uh, to decide or to choose the type of statistical test which has to be applied, one of the major determinants is the type of data. And this is one of the most important uh, reasons of determining the data type. Now moving ahead, the postgraduate, uh, uh, when he was collecting data, the question asked by him uh, while data collection were the gender, whether male or female, or the marks obtained in the last exam and the difficulty level of the exam. Now suppose in place of uh, this marks obtained in the last exam, uh, he would have collected the data in terms of uh, results, whether passed or failed. So think for a moment, would he be able to comment on these things, like the average marks obtained um, by say the boys or girls, the interquartile range of the marks, the minimum and maximum marks obtained, the variation in the marks amongst the males and females, certainly would not. So here the research suffers a loss of information if these information were wanted. Now there becomes a need for recollecting the data which is often not possible and the student feels stuck after collecting whole lot of data and when there is not enough information available. So he or she might not be able to go back and collect the data. So here it becomes very necessary to decide a particular type of uh, data to be collected so that the information is correctly uh, uh, acquired. So the fourth purpose of determining the data type is that it helps in framing proper questions in a questionnaire, hence in planning the study analysis in a better way. Now the postgraduate uh, further wanted to quantify the role of the independent variables that means the gender and the difficulty level on the marks obtained. Now he knew that it could be done with the help of a regression analysis. Now this is the uh, typical equation for the regression analysis to be done. This is the first scenario in which the dependent variable that means the marks obtained is a numerical data or a numerical type of variable. The other scenario could be if the outcome variable or the dependent variable was in a dichotomous or categorical output or qualitative data, then 
again then again the uh, say, uh, the equation would be general equation would be the same but the type of regression analysis used will be different for the first half where the dependent variable is a continuous data or a uh, or a numerical output a linear regression has to be used whereas if the dependent variable is a categorical uh, data that means results pass or fail then something known as logistic regression have to be used so the next purpose of determining the data type is that it helps in identifying the way in which data should be analyzed further now there are some special considerations which you should keep in mind in many epidemiological studies with substantial follow up time it is often of interest to study the rate of occurrence of events over time uh, this is known as time to event data for example uh, rate of graft failure since transplant or time to relapse since treatment etc now this time up to a certain event is called as survival time to analyze survival time special techniques have been developed which are uh, collected collect, uh, collectively uh, discussed under under survival analysis so you must keep in mind whether you are dealing with time to event data or not in your study so that survival analysis can be planned another set of important uh, type of data is a uh, uh, circular data or angular data uh, sometimes in studies in the subjects like anatomy or orthopedics or sports biomechanics you come across with data which are collected in terms of angles that means degree i give an example to highlight the importance of uh, analysis of this type of data suppose you are you have been asked to calculate the average of uh, 359 degree and 1 degree so uh, with simple calculation you would say it's 180 degrees but with a little thought you might say that 0 degree is a better answer so this is the caveat which requires a separate uh, uh, battery of uh, techniques for the analysis of this angular data or circular data uh, often these type of data are uh, analyzed in a usual way but i would uh, uh, find this opportunity of uh, explaining or telling you that uh, this type of data can be analyzed in a better way if this type of techniques are being used so with the help of a scenario we have discussed about the purpose of determining the data type and to summarize it helps in identifying the way in which the data should be summarized or described it helps in identifying the way in which data should be presented graphically it helps in choosing the statistical test which is the most important purpose it helps in identifying the way in which the data should be analyzed further it helps in framing the questions in a questionnaire hence in planning a study in a better way so i used these references for making this presentation and i hope this helps thank you and if you have any questions please drop down in the comments thank you